how's everybody doing? I've never had to wait so long to do a presentation. I really didn't have anything to do here, so I was watching all of you. Um, I have to tell you that I was shocked when I walked into this room and saw how big it was. Uh, <laughs> I was expecting a little, you know, tiny room, and then, you know, I thought, oh, all well, these chairs, I'm going to see a sea of empty chairs, but as the time goes on, you guys keep filling in the chairs, which makes me a little bit nervous. It also means, you know, it's not a very good sign that, um, that there are so many people in this room. If we were doing this well, if we were doing licensing really well, you guys, I, this would be empty, and I'm hoping that next year <laughs> things will be a little bit different. But I mean, I think one of the biggest things is that we have a lot of existing customers, and um, at least this is the story we tell, that we have, to, uh, we have to make sure that we are taking care of everyone, not just the new customers, but also the existing customers. So. Um, I, I am glad that you're all here. I'm sort of, I'm also surprised because we did do a lot of presentations uh, before FileMaker 17 shipped and right around when 17 shipped in May. Um, I don't know, how many of you attended those? Raise your hand, okay, so it is still confusing. That's, okay, well, you'll hear it a second time and hopefully it'll ring true and um, we, are, we are here to help you. We want you to be successful. So um, let's move on here. So um, like everybody else, I have to talk about myself just you know, so you feel comfortable with who I am and hopefully you come over to me and tell me who you are. And uh, if I've talked to you on the phone or if I've not talked to you on the phone, please seek me out and show me who you are and uh, tell me what you do. I'd love to hear about you. But who am I? Well, first of all, you know, I've got to show pictures of the family. I've got two young adult kids. And uh, for any of you that have young adult kids, please come, you know, if you feel like you want to commiserate with me, I actually have them living at home. Um, I guess that's, there's a new term called boomerang kids, and that's what I have. Uh, it's so comfy at home, and you know, I guess we were all helicopter parents, and I really tried not to be a hel helicopter parent, and it still happened, so. Um, what else can I tell you? I've been married for, actually, I've been um, with my husband for 38 years, or 37 years, something like that, and I've married for 30 years, I know, with, to the same guy, pretty amazing. He does not look like that anymore, but that's, you know, because of the kids. Um, I've also worked at a lot, I've been a, in high-tech sales for many, many years, and um, I got out of college and I worked for Lotus. I don't know if you all know one, two, three. That was really exciting. I was there for the shipment of Symphony, which ended up dying very quickly, but I did support. And uh, back then with support, it was like, how do you do addition? How do you do subtraction? So that was really exciting. Um, I then moved on to uh, Software Publishing Corporation, or SPC. They made Harvard Graphics, um, and they'd still be in business. They actually competed with PowerPoint, and then PowerPoint came out, and Microsoft gave it away for free in Office, and then that company just died. Anyone know Harvard Graphics or Harvard Project Manager? Yeah, okay, so I worked there. Uh, then I moved over to Symantec. That was exciting, uh, with Norton, yeah, and Q&A. Um, so that was, that was a great time. And uh, what else did I do? I moved over to a um, bunch of companies um, with, that started, that ended up being Nuance. So speech recognition, pretty much any speech recognition has the Dragon Engine in it, that's owned by Nuance. Um, and I sold to radiology departments. And um, originally I worked for LearnOut and Housebee and they were the original um, company where like the two presidents are in jail now because they started uh, empty companies, I forget what they're called, but like fictitious companies and then started selling to those fictitious companies and anyway, they, they went away. But that was, that speech recognition is a lot of fun. Um, and then finally I moved over to FileMaker and I hope this is my last position because I love this company and I hope, you know, I know you are all here because you love FileMaker too. So, what else can I tell you? Um, does anyone know what that is, that little sign there? Okay, yeah, so if you have a, a, a watch, an Apple watch, um, you can close your rings if you do activity. Um, and I just wanted to mention that I don't close my rings. I am, I am not really into, but FileMaker people are really into doing this, and Apple has a lot of contests about closing your rings, and that is not something I do. Um, so you might wonder what this group is. Well, um, I've traveled over the years a lot on planes and I've been with a lot of famous people and animals. I, in fact, was on a plane with Lassie 
but uh, there are multiple lassies, I guess, but I was on the plane with one of the lassies. Um, I also sat next to Hulk Hogan, Hulk Hogan on a plane. Yes, pro wrestler, me next to him. It was really cool. Um, and uh, uh, Rob Gronkowski was actually on a, on a plane with me. He, I was traveling a lot from Toronto back to Boston. I'm based out of Boston, so uh, um, I am a big Red Sox fan. And I don't, you know, I, that's a little bit controversial, but I mean, how about those Red Sox this year? I mean, come on. <laughs> amazing, amazing. Gosh. Okay, so that's enough about me. Oh, no, I go to, I travel. My sister lives in Italy for over 40 years. I have two brothers that live in Hawaii, so I get to travel and I go to Mexico too. So, okay. Oh, one more thing Super Bowl commercial. Can I do this? I don't know if I can do this. Um, my husband was an actor out in LA, and he was in a Super Bowl commercial, so I will quickly show you this. That's Fred my husband. Is great. He always wants to play. Just look at him go. He's got so much energy, but he sure can work up quite a thirst. That's why I give him Budweiser. <laughs> so that is, that's my husband. That's his claim to fame. That's his 15 minutes of, uh, of famousness. Okay. All right, this is actually a, a fancy picture of me. I went and had headshots done, had all the Photoshopping done, so that's a great picture of me. And um, I'm a partner manager for FileMaker. I handle the, um, east the east half of the country. And then Stephen Day, you may work with, he handles the west side of the country and also Canada. Um, and we support the SBAs and the FBAs. Okay, so what am I going to talk about? You are probably expecting only licensing. Um, that is a big portion of what I'm going to be talking today about. But I'm also going to talk about the pillars of excellence. I didn't actually realize, we didn't coordinate, but I, you, they did talk about pillars of excellence before this presentation. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about why to resell. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. Um, licensing programs, renewals, transition, um, the FBA sales assist, and the web store, and who to contact if you, even after this, you can't figure out what to do. Um, the goals are um, we want to grow our licensing business. We, want, we feel that if you are growing your business and FileMaker is growing our business, it is mutually beneficial. Um, and really the only way we make money is through licensing sales. So we really do want you to know about our licensing. Whether you influence the sale or actually sell the licenses, both are extremely important to us. Um, ease, you know, arguably it has been tough to understand our program, so we want to make it easier for you. Um, consistency, what's really important to us is that we want you to be saying the same things as us and us to be saying the same things as you. We don't want to confuse the customer. Um, we want to recognize you for being here today. You know, kudos to you for actually sitting in my presentation. Um, and partnership, we are, a, we are partners with you and we want to grow together. So. Um, you've seen this, this has a little bit more of detail. What we did many years ago was we said, we want to define what is important to us in a partner. So these really are what's important to us. It's not necessarily what's important to you. We hope that you look at these and decide if there is one or two or three or four, or maybe all of them that you want to focus on. But this, this truly is what's important to us. Develop is about um, uh, solving complex business challenges. I think you guys do that every day. Um, we also focus there and develop on becoming FileMaker certified. Although you can argue that uh, just because you're certified doesn't mean that you are an excellent developer. We feel that it's a, it's a standard to, to live up to and to meet. Um, and outside of FileMaker, I think it is considered important to, to be certified. I know personally, if I was going to a website and I was looking at somebody, uh, a consultant who was certified, and not certified, I would go with the one that was certified. So um, design is hugely important to us, um, and there's a lot of ways to learn about design. We are an Apple company. It is really important for us that, that, th that the things that you build, that the apps that you build are beautiful. Um, some of the ways to focus on design are to go to a design class. There are people that give design classes. There's a ton of information on the web. There are design books to read. And also, if you're an FBA, you may consider hiring somebody who's an expert at design. Um, innovate. This is an area that's very important to us. This is about building vertical solutions and also horizontal solutions. And bundling those solutions with our software, we give a deep discount, a 50% discount for doing that. Um, and going to the marketplace and basically taking a project 
to a product, being a maybe a subject matter expert, maybe you, you are one, or you're working with a customer who's a subject matter expert, and either they or you decide that the marketplace is really big and, and for that particular vertical, vertical, and you go out to market and sell that. That has become a really big part of our business. Um, Grow is about licensing sales. It's about selling new, brand new licenses to brand new companies. It's about selling to existing, doing renewals to existing customers, and also trying to expand within existing customers. Either you know the group is getting bigger that you sell to, or that you ask that group to invite you to, to talk to other groups within the organization, other divisions, other departments. Um, that is the way to grow the business, and that is hugely important to us because as I said before, that's where we make money. Um, advocate is about demand generation, one-to-many things that you do, where you go out and do a webinar, a seminar, uh, you do a blog posting, you host a user group. All of these are ways to get the word out about FileMaker, creating demand about FileMaker. And that's, it's wonderful. You are an extension of us, and we love when, when our, our partners do that. Educate is really about um, what we're doing here in, at DevCon, taking the level of the pro developer and, and raising it, um, making people that use FileMaker every day, every day, teaching them more about FileMaker, whether it's offering training classes, publishing technical documents or videos or webinars or white papers. Um, speaking at DevCon, we really can, want to, you to consider every year to um, propose something to speak about. And when you think about this, there are different levels of, of um, DevCon sessions. You can do an, uh, a beginner session. So you don't have to be super technical, super smart to be able to give a DevCon presentation that is, that is valuable. Um, and I think that's it. Participate in the file community, maybe become an MVP of the FileMaker community. So those are, those are the things to focus on as a partner. Okay, why to reseller? We think it provides the best customer experience. Um, One-stop shopping. You are the expert, they are, you are the trusted advisor, and we hope that you understand, we're glad you're here today because we want you to understand our licensing and to be able to explain it to, to customers. But also to have the one-stop shopping of where they're, they are purchasing both the licenses and also uh, the, the app development. It's also recurring revenue. So just to give you an idea of what the opportunity is, the average FBA sells about $20,000 a year in FileMaker licenses. About 50% of that is new licenses and 50% is, is renewal licenses. It is, both of those are extremely important to us. We have to renew our existing customers. We have to expand the licensing to new customers. Um, the lifetime customer value. Our licenses are either sold perpetual or annual. If they're perpetual, there is maintenance to sell. If it's annual, you are selling them every year. So there is a, a once you've sold the licenses to a customer, there's that recurring revenue. Today I'm going to be talking about um, dollars in US dollars, um, but the percents are about the same across the world. Um, so if you, you take a, uh, want to look at the margins for an FBA, um, if you look at over to the left, we've got FileMaker user licensing, a five user annual, the retail cost is $900, the FBA cost is $755, that's what you pay for it, and the margin is 16%. With perpetual, you've got it at $2,700, $2,270 for your cost, and again, 16% margin. So. Something to focus on. Um, here's a FileMaker user licensing at a 30 user. Um, you can see now in our new FileMaker 17 licensing, user licensing, it includes the entire platform. Uh, the retail price is uh, 4,720, FBA costs 3,630. You're getting $690, but that's an annual, annually you'll be making that. So if you as you grow and sell more of those, that can be a great revenue stream. Here we have it for site licensing with a 32 headcount, again, the entire platform, and you can see profit is 1,344 perpetual, perpetual licensing. Okay, what about individual licenses? Well, one thing to note today is that we are only selling FileMaker Pro Advanced. That is the desktop option for everybody. Um, it, so it replaces FileMaker Pro, 
if you're doing individual licenses, um, you know, or um, electronic software download on our website, that is for less than, than five users. Um, it does not include maintenance, but it does have upgrades. And it, right now we are offering an upgrade from three versions back until September 21st of this year. And this is on the FileMaker store. I'm sure you've all been there. So let's talk about the licensing programs of today, the FileMaker 17 licensing programs that we actually um, uh, we brought out in, uh, in May of, of this year. We have three different licensing programs. One is called user licensing, one is called concurrency, and one is site licensing. We have gotten rid of, we, these all replace what we call our legacy programs, which are FileMaker licensing for teams, annual FileMaker licensing for teams, volume licensing, and annual volume licensing. So all of those are no longer available. And also a FileMaker licensing for teams, we also called FLT. And if you remember, there was, in that FLT, there was something called User Connects. It was basically FileMaker, but you had to connect to a server. That's gone, because I think that was very confusing. Okay, um, so what is, what is consistent among all three programs? Well, I'm gonna go through a, th a few slides about that. FileMaker Pro Advance is included in all programs. Um, it is the only desktop offering. Um, so now everyone has a, um, advanced features, but the default is when it's installed that it, those features are turned off. Um, also, as a programmer, you can turn them off so that a user cannot turn them on. Um, and that product works both offline and online, just like in the olden days pre-FLT, offline and online, which is, I think is great. Um, what else is important is that regardless of what program you're selling, the entire product line. So it, we are selling it as a platform. You can no longer purchase just a, a FileMaker server alone. You purchase the entire platform, um, and it includes FileMaker Server, Pro Advance, Go, WebDirect, and the Data API. Um, and to talk a little bit about the Data API, which is included in all programs, incoming Data API transfer is unlimited, and outgoing is limited. Um, it is limited to, first of all, you, you see how many, either how many licenses, uh, how many user licenses you've purchased, how many concurrencies you've purchased, um, or how many seats you've purchased, and you multiply that by two gigabytes, and then you multiply it by 12 for 12 months, and that is the yearly amount of API outgoing transfer that you, that you have. Uh, you can buy additional. We feel that the two, gig two gigabytes per user per month is, it should, should satisfy the, the, the vast majority of, of user users. Um, so the other thing that we think is phenomenal is that it's now one license key per contract. And this does not change when you upgrade, and this does not change when you add licenses. You will have the same license key. And that license key is also for, yay, yes. That license key is both for installing the server and also installing FileMaker Pro Advanced. Oh, and also, in, when we shipped 17, we did send maintenance releases out to all the customers that, that had this. Um, and there will be some consolidation because some customers were purchasing multiple servers at different times, so there will be some consolidation necessary for existing customers, and I'll talk more about that later. Okay, so selling to new customers, this is, I would, I would argue this is the easiest thing to do because you don't have to worry about what they have. And the options are user licensing, concurrent connection, or site licensing, and we're gonna talk about why you would use one or the other. Um, and the reason that user is bigger is that we feel that most, most opportunities you will be selling user licensing. So there is consistency. Um, first of all, in user licensing, it's easy to use because we offer the entire platform. It's easy to purchase because you're, the, first of all, you purchase the entire platform. It's a minimum of five users. You can add one user at a time once you've met the five. So once you've met five, you could, you could purchase six, seven, eight, um, and you can add users along the way. Um, and also, we like to promote purchasing multiple years. So you can purchase one, two, or three years, and you do get discounts. 
Um, the regular discount is 10% off of the second year and 20% off the third year if you do it all up front. And finally, easy to manage, as I said before. One key, it stays that same key per contract, um, and the key won't change over time. You, could in, you, can, add exist, you can add new um, users to that license. And what's nice about that is, let's say you, you have a five user, and three months down the road, you want to purchase um, another user. That's going to be added to the contract, but it's going to be prorated to just nine months left on the contract. And it's actually prorated by the day. So whatever day you buy it, however many days are left on that contract, it will be prorated to that. So it stays on that same contract. When that contract renews, it's now not renewing for five licenses, it's renewing for six or six users. So what is a user? Well, a user is a unique person that is using FileMaker. Um, and it's any type of access. If they are touching FileMaker in any capacity, they are a user. Um, and it cannot be shared. That user cannot be shared. So even if a user is only accessing FileMaker for five minutes a year, they are a user. Um, oh, a little caveat there is if you have a customer and they are, um, they are, let's say somebody leaves the company, they have a user license for that person and a new person joins, they can just redeploy that to the new, to the new user. And I'm going to have questions at the end. If you guys could write down your questions, um, and I've been asked to make sure that you uh, go to the front to the, so everyone can hear you, and also we're recording this, believe it or not. We are recording this, so you can hear it later. Okay, so what does it include? Well, in user licensing, I keep saying this, but it includes the entire platform, FileMaker Pro Advance, FileMaker Go, WebDirect, and the data API, plus three servers. And if you get an annual um, user license, then one of those three servers can go to FileMaker Cloud. One of the three can go to FileMaker Cloud. And you can use, you might say, well, why do we need three servers? Well, a lot of times I've had customers say, well, I want to have a test, a, de a dev test production server, two, three different servers. So this allows them to do that. If they need more servers, you can actually come to your FileMaker representative and you get a letter and they can purchase, for free, they're, they're, they are able to install more than three servers. We will send them a letter. They'll keep that on file and be able to install more than three. But three should, should handle most. Um, if it's a perpetual user license, none of, none of those three servers can be in, in FileMaker Cloud. If you're using another hosting company, then you can put all three in the cloud. Well, you can put any of these in the cloud. But this is a limitation just to FileMaker Cloud, just one uh, if you get annual. So let's move on to concurrent connections. And there is a similarity here. Well, first of all, it's easy to use the entire platform. It's easy to purchase. Starts with a minimum of five, and you can add in increments of one, and you can purchase for one, two, or three years. By the end, you're going to be able to do this presentation. Um, easy to manage, one key, um, and the key will not change over time, and you can add users to that, to that uh, key. So what is a concurrent connection? Um, it allows shared access to the FileMaker platform by more than one person. And a concurrent connection allows you to access anything, if you're, you know, users to access any part of FileMaker. Um, it's great for anonymous and occasional users. I'm going to talk about more of this later. But anonymous users cannot use FileMaker Pro Advanced. So if you're doing a, an application where it's going out to anonymous users, they will be able to access through FileMaker WebDirect or FileMaker Go. You will not be able to send out the offline version or, of FileMaker Pro Advance because essentially that would be giving away FileMaker Pro Advance to anonymous users and we do not want to do that. So what do you get in, in concurrent connections? You get in, uh, the entire platform. And you get one server, not three. Um, and that server, if it's an annual concurrency license, you can put that one server on FileMaker Cloud. If it's perpetual, you cannot. It has to be on premise or on another, another person's who's hosting other than FileMaker Cloud. 
Okay, site licensing. Again, easy to use, the entire platform, easy to purchase. This starts with 25 seats, but it is the lowest per license price product that we have out there. But it, it does require you, um, it starts with 25 seats. You can purchase one, two, or three years, and anonymous users outside the employee count may not install FileMaker Pro Advanced. This is consistent. And finally, easy to manage, one key per customer, um, and the key will not change over time. That's actually has always been in, in the site license. So we need to talk about what a what is the headcount. If you're selling a site license, it's important to understand that it is required that you sell to the entire organization, 100% of the employees, 100% of the temporary employees, 100% of the contractors and consultants of this organization. Um, but again, the per user price is a lot lower. So I encourage you as you're doing pricing for customers that you always take a look at, even if it's a 10 person company, it may be cheaper for them to go to site licensing than to do a 10 user. So always consider that even though it's a minimum of 25. Okay, so what is a site and what is not a site? Let's talk about that. Um, we, are pretty, we are strict about this. Whole companies are eligible. That means the entire organization. Um, not eligible, single departments within the company. The support department is not eligible for a site. Um, eligible is subsidiary, so like FileMaker, who's a wholly owned subsidiary of Apple, could purchase a site license of FileMaker. Um, single divisions like uh, the, the, that are not formal subsidiaries cannot purchase. So a division that's not a subsidiary cannot purchase a site license. Operations within a, entire operations within a country can purchase a site license. But a single function like global marketing or global sales could not purchase a site license. Okay, so um, options for anonymous users. There are two options, concurrent connections and site licensing. And as I said before, you can, they cannot use FileMaker Pro Advanced. I think there was something else I was gonna tell you here, but I can't remember. Anonymous. Oh, okay, so a lot of people ask, and um, is, so I have a company and they have five users and they have a five user um, license, and then all of a sudden they want to offer um, a portal for their, for anyone out there. Um, and let's say it's, I don't know, 2,000 of their vendors they want to offer a portal to. So what do you sell them? Well, what you would do is you would keep that five user because those five users are probably in the solution every day, all day long. So you, you don't want, you'd want to keep them on that. But you'd also purchase a, um, a concurrent, a five user concurrent connection or a 10 user, whatever you think is that those 2,000 people will be coming in concurrently you would, let's say you think that the maximum number of people that will be coming in concurrently of all of those 2,000 vendors is 10. You would buy a 10 concurrent connection also. And you would use the server of that 10 concurrent connection. And for the, of those five users, you would no longer use the three servers that come with that, with that licensing those five users would connect into that concurrency server. They would not be taking up a concurrent connection. So you can ask questions afterwards if that's not clear. Um, how to add concurrency, we've actually made this available on the FileMaker store, um, also on the FBA web store. Um, so there is a, you, if you go to the web store on the first page, you will see add licenses. If you click on that, it will ask you for the, um, the license key. If you plug that in, it will know how many licenses and it will ask you how many do you wanna add and you can add in minimum of increments of one. So we've made it very easy to do that. How to add data API, the only way to do this is to contact your FileMaker rep, your inside sales rep. Vertical solution, I wanna talk a little bit about this. It's near and dear to my heart. I've got a lot of SBAs in, out here um, watching this today. Um, this, is, this, is f this is where you've, you either are a subject matter expert 
or you are working and developing a solution for a subject matter expert, and you say, wow, this, is, this could be a product. This maybe has a large opportunity, a large marketplace that you could sell to. So you, you can create a project into a product and sell that uh, broadly. And we have, special, we have a special program within FBA that you can apply to. You can become an SBA program participant. And what you get with that is you get a 50% discount on the FileMaker platform. It is required that you as an SBA are both the build to and the ship to. Um, we do ask for the end user name, but we do not market to, to the end user. So we just register because now we are, are registering servers to end user customers. We do have their name attached to it, but we don't market to them. The two programs that are available are user licensing and concurrent, concurrency licensing. We do not offer um, site licensing within the SBA program. So three ways to purchase. One is to, um, you, you are bundling the, soft, the software with your program, with your app. Thank you. Um, and uh, so you, can, you would be selling either user or concurrency. Um, you can add users whenever needed. And the end user, as I said before, is required. There is also two other programs that are not available anywhere else but the SBA program. And this is, one of them is solution bundle hosting. We allow our SBAs to be able to host multiple customers on one server. And there are some requirements here. Customers cannot access the OS. You must be, um, as an SBA, you must be the solution administrator and the server, administra ad server administrator. Um, you're responsible for adequate security. Um, and we do require you to report back to FileMaker on who the customers are. The other thing that we added um, was solution bundle no server. What we found with our SBAs is that sometimes in order to get into a company, they're just basically selling a you know, FileMaker and they're not selling a server yet because they're, they're sort of um, starting a customer and they're not, the customer is not yet ready to buy in fully. Um, so we made this available where it, it is the only place where you can buy and, and distribute just FileMaker Pro Advanced without anything else, no server, no, they are not allowed to use WebDirect or, um, or FileMaker Pro, uh, FileMaker Go. So another thing that's only available through SBA. Okay, so let's talk about existing customers. So we're not gonna talk about SBA anymore, we're just gonna talk about for generally selling to existing customers, renewals. One thing that we offered when we shipped in May was the ability to grandfather in our old pricing because pricing did change. So for up to three years, you can, per, you can sell your customer a three-year renewal that will hold their price, their FileMaker 16 price, for up to three years. Of course, it is, they do have to purchase up front, um, so not every customer is gonna wanna do that, but it is available. This is some of the letters, I'm not, <laughs> we're not gonna go through these in detail, but when we shipped FileMaker 17, we did inform all of our customers about the, ship, about the maintenance release, and we shipped out maintenances. Uh, we also uh, are sending renewal letters to existing customers. All right, so here are some use cases. Let's say you have a customer that has three existing contracts. This is very often very, very usual. Um, they have an AVLA contract with five FileMaker Pro and one server. They have another contract with one server and a third contract with one server. So when FileMaker 17 shipped, this is what happened. They got three user licensing. They got one five user that had three servers. They got one one user with three servers and another one user with three servers. Now remember, this is only in renewal. We will not sell less than a five user, but for renewals, we allowed, we allowed this. When they had one user, they got, or one server, they got one user plus three servers. Well, this is a lot of licensing and probably more than what they need. When their renewal comes up, this is what we would probably do. So this is what we would suggest you do, is to sell them a seven user that has three servers. And there's a little note here that says, if they need more than three servers, they should contact us or you should contact us and we can send out a letter um, 
we ask how many ser additional servers they need and we give them permission in a letter. Okay, another example. Uh, this customer has an existing contract with 5 Pro, one server, and they have another contract with 5 Pro Advanced and one server. So, what happens here? Five, they get a five user with three servers and another five user with three servers because guess what? We don't have FileMaker Pro anymore, we just have Pro Advanced. So everyone, you get a FileMaker Pro Advanced, you get a FileMaker Pro Advanced, everyone gets FileMaker Pro Advanced. I'm not good at Oprah, but it's a little early to be doing that. Okay, you might have guessed it. What do you consolidate them to? A 10 user with three servers. Easy, right? This is easy. Yes. I'm getting blank stares. Okay, this is a trick question here. This is, um, this, this customer has an AVLA with 10 concurrent connections, and they have another AVLA with 40 concurrent connections. So what happens here? Well, it transitions when, with FileMaker 17 to a 10 concurrent connection license with one server, and a 40 concurrent connection license with one server. And if it's annual, it, as it is, it is an AVLA, so it's annual, one, that one server can either be on-premise or in the cloud. So this is the trick of what happens to this. Well, they probably bought two different servers with two different sets of concurrent connections for a reason, so they probably would keep these separate. So they would continue to renew. There would be no, no consolidation here. Okay, how to purchase. Okay, wow, we've been through this pretty quickly. What time it is? Um, so um, on the web store, it is, uh, you know, filemaker.com slash FBA slash uh, login. You log in with your FBA credentials and you get onto the FBA store. What's great about this is it's 24 seven open. You know, so you can purchase licenses 24 seven. Um, it's for immediate transaction. It's for reselling new both perpetual and annual, and also adding licenses. Renewals you cannot do on the FileMaker store. You have to go through FileMaker uh, Inside Sales to do renewals. Um, and I'm gonna actually show you um, FileMaker Sales Assist, I think right now. But if you're an FBA, every month you get FileMaker Sales Assist. And this is kind of our, our um, price list. And um, this is how you learn about and, and quote pricing for FileMaker. So I think this is it. Let's do the demo. I'm going to sit down. And I promise you, you're going to get out of here early because I don't have much more here. All right. OK. <laughs> this is supposed to be easy. All right, what am I doing here? I want to go to Sales Assist. Where is Sales Assist? I guess it closed. There we go. Okay, so when you open Sales Assist, there is a, there's a link for every country. So whatever country you are selling to, you would need to um, get that Sales Assist. And um, one of the things to note here is in order to be connected to the FileMaker store when you're using this, and there are good reasons to be connected to the, file, the FBA web store, um, there is, uh, you can't see it here, but um, it, it shows you the login for getting to the web store. Um, you click on that login, you put in your email address, and then you will get an email with a link to the FBA web store with access there. So right here on the first page, is it gives you that ability. Um, so that's the new, oh, also on, on the right, you can't read it, is, this is an eye test. I will ask you questions about this later. But this is where we will, this is why, one of the reasons we um, update this every month because there are new promos and, and information and announcements over to the right. Um, here, if I click on FileMaker Store, this is where you click, and um, I'm already logged in, so this will bring you to the FileMaker Store. Let's go back here. Um, SKUs, for those of you who have built your own quote-making tools, um, here are all the SKUs that you'd ever want for FileMaker 17. You can actually click on this button here um, to export um, all of those and import them into your program if you want to do that. What else do we have? I'm gonna skip over pricing right now and go to contact. Um, if you have any questions, this, is, this will be based on whatever uh, territory you're located in. So my name is there and Stephen Day's name is there and lots of people's names are there depending on what you need to do. 
Um, and then settings, you can actually go in and put in your own information. So let's move to pricing, which is the most exciting part of this. And we've really tried to build this to make it pretty simple to work with. So the first thing you do is you choose whether it's a new or a renewal. So I'm gonna say this is a new license. Over here to the right is um, whether it's corporate government pricing or whether it's education nonprofit, so you can quickly select there. Over here is um, user concurrency or site. So you pick which one you want. We're gonna to stick to user right now. Um, and then you can choose annual or perpetual. And then you can choose whether you want three years, two years, one year. Guess what we default to? Sometimes people get a little annoyed at that. But you know, we want you to be thinking about selling three years. You're actually, um, it's something to offer. It's the, the customer is getting a 20% discount off the third year, a 10% off the second year. So you should consider offering that. We always feel that it's good to offer a customer two options. We think three is too many, one is too little, and two is perfect. So you might want to offer, you know, maybe a two year or a three year in addition to the one year. Um, then we can go in and we can say we want six licenses, and there it is. It's a little bit hard to see here. Actually, if you have any complaints, Ronnie built it over here. No? <laughs> um, so over here it says what the, in gray, it actually says what the um, FileMaker SKU is, if you'd like to know what that is. It has the FBA cost per unit and the retail cost per unit. And then over to the right it says quantity six, what the FBA cost is, and what the retail cost is. You can go in and save the pricing here um, to come back to it, or you can also click on order online, and if you are connected to the FileMaker store, voila, you can purchase it right there and then, because this is new licensing. Isn't that great? Um, so what else? can I show you? But also, when you go to save pricing, this is where you put in, you know, the customer name. So I'm going to say this is Joe Customer, and company name is FileMaker, and we can put in the street address, but we'll put in Mia, just so you remember my email address in case you want to email me, Mia Roop, Mia underscore Roop at FileMaker.com, there, there we go. Um, you can, uh, this is if you are actually, um, this would be a case where you do renewal, where you could, you would be sending it to an inside sales rep, and um, you could say, you know, this customer is a pain in the neck, neck, okay, and um, yeah, then you can go in and uh, email it to sales here, or you can order it online, but here we go. It's showing you, it, it attaches all of that information that you provided, and then someone will get back to you from our inside sales department. That is for a renewal. Okay, so what can we go back to? Let's do another one here. We'll go back to pricing. Uh, if we do a renew here, we can renew, let's say, 10 licenses, we can add Let's say we want to add more licenses. That's always a really important question to ask your existing customers if you're doing their renewal. We do it internally. There's always an opportunity. Do more people need to be using this solution? Um, and then here's where you would put in renewing you know, more data API. Let's say you want two users of that. Um, actually, this is renewing. And then if you want to add more data API, that's where you would do that. And it, it, th in this case, you will see that you can. there's no online store button here because this is a renewal. This, you will have to save the pricing. You will have to put in the customer name. And you will have to send this to FileMaker Inside Sales. And it will automatically go through your email. And they will get back to you with a quote and possibly give you a phone call. So I think that's it. There's also education nonprofit pricing. Um, we have concurrencies. So um, you can see it's pretty easy to use. What else can I talk to you about? I think that's it, believe it or not. Let me go back to my keynote. So if you have further questions, um, depending on where you're located, uh, basically, pretty much half of the country is going to call me if you're sort of east. 
Half of the country is going to call Stephen Day. Um, if you're in Europe, you're going to call Marie. Um, so we have David Borgness up here. So we have all of the different contacts here. Um, if you don't know whether you're on one half of the country or the other, because we didn't, I didn't tell you which half you were on and you're in the middle, just call one of us. Contact me, contact Stephen. We will send you in the right direction. Hopefully we'll just answer your question. So. Um, that is all the information that I provide. I'll go back to this slide. And if you want to come up here and ask any questions, if, you're, if you are free to leave also and um, to go to your next session, um, and I really appreciate you all being here. So thanks. Uh-oh. <laughs> What'd you say? I'm worried. What are you, you going to ask? I'll give them to you in bullet points, OK? OK, thank you. I told him yesterday that I, I'm very much in emails. I don't like prose. I don't like long emails. It, I, want, I want it bullet pointed out. I don't know how everyone else feels about that. My other pet peeve is that when you send me an email, the subject line, I should be able to tell what's in your email from the subject line. If you just put, hey, Mia, forget it. It's going in the trash. So. I'll compromise with you. I'll give you email with poetry. OK, okay. <laughs> poetry, good. I'll make okay. it rhyme. Um, this is a question that came up a few years ago and every year. How long will it be before we can go online and see our purchases? It is, um, I think there's an intention, there's an intention to do that. I'm not really, it would be my boss who, would, who you know who would make the decision on that. I think our goal would be to have that available. I think it's really important that you guys should have a self-service, do-it-yourself place to find your own. It really helps to be able to yeah. review. Yeah, it sounds like there's a lot of that. So See, I will bring that feedback. The applause was for the question. OK. Uh, <laughs> not for the answer. <laughs> Next bullet. Uh, all right, so here's a, a scenario, that, and I'll reserve the other ones for a time when we can get together. On, uh, Let's say that there's a, um, a company that's got a couple hundred thousand employees around the world, but they've got an office here in Texas with 50 people. What do you recommend they do? A 50 user. I mean, are all of those people around the world going to be using it? Or no, who's no, going to be using FileMaker? They don't even know FileMaker exists. But because they're a part of that organization, they can't purchase a site license. Right. They would purchase a user license. Um, unless, let's say, out of those, so nobody around the world is going to be using it, just the 50 people in Texas. Right. Um, the user, 50 users, the way to, or however many people within Texas are going to be using FileMaker would, would get, you know, 10 user, 20 user. Um, if, let's say, out of those 50 users, everyone wants to use it, but there's only going to be five users at any one time, it would be cheaper to do a five concurrency. Because five, and one of the nice things about the sales assist is that you can compare. Um, you might also want to, well, no, you can't do site licensing because if you did site licensing, you would have to do the entire country. That's the problem. Country. Yeah. Okay, and the, the last one is a um, slightly different situation. You've got a company that has, um, let's say, three or four people who work in their office and 20 or 30 people who work as field technicians. You know, they could be uh, maintenance people or nurses who, you know, go visit with people, but they're constantly hiring and firing those people. Mm -hmm. they, they're always changing. So yeah. what is, what would be best for them? What I would probably suggest, are, are the 20 or 30 people that are around and changing, um, are, they, are they in FileMaker all day long? They're FileMaker all day long until they get fired. Okay. Um, I would count up the number of users and sell them that number of users. Um, and you can redeploy those licenses to whoever the new person is. And, and those users are, are using Go. Yes. That's okay. You can then. remember the whole platform. Okay. So every user, and not only, what's also different is that every user can be on FileMaker Go, FileMaker Pro, Advanced, and FileMaker Web Direct all at the same time. Now, I don't know why they'd want to be, but with FLT, with FileMaker Licensing for Teams, we had this rule that it was you're either on Go. Pro or Web Direct. Now they can be on, each user can be on all three at the same time. So the person who's gone is going home and going to another job and they still have their iPad or their phone in their possession. It might still have Go installed on it, but the person who takes their place will be able to use the same license. It is the, the um, licensee's responsibility to take 
to take it off that person's, not allow them. Go is free. Okay, go is free. Right. Yeah, Ronnie, thank you for being here. Um, certainly, if, they have, if they're um, using FileMaker Pro Advanced, they need, the co company needs yeah, to make sure they get it, that off of the, their okay. computer. Thank you, Mia. You're welcome. I will say, in a situation where those 20 or 30 people are occasional users, um, you would probably have two licenses. You would have the concurrent connection licenses for however, maybe a five concurrent connection because maybe there's only five people at any one time, and you'd have a five user for the people in the office that are using it all day long. As I've said before, and I feel like I need to reiterate, you get, with that five user, you get three servers, but you don't use those three servers. You use the server that comes with, the one server that comes with the concurrent connection server, and, um, and all of those users will connect into that server, and the occasional users. And the users that are, um, it's able, the server is able to tell whether it's uh, one of those user licenses or whether it's the concurrent connection, and it will not take up a concurrent connection. Yes. Sorry, I have about three questions. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Sorry. Um, uh, would, would be your recommendation for going into a company that has um, already established cont contracts uh, directly with FileMaker? As far as getting them to you or something? or If I wanted to renew, how would I do that? Or, um, uh, you know, uh, th they're used to dealing with FileMaker directly. Now, you know, I would like to be able to sell mm -hmm. them the license or renew their licenses. Yep. How would, uh, what would your recommendation be for that? What would the what be for that? Your recommendation and how, um, how to handle that. I would say that you would con contact the customer, tell them that you can also sell licensing um, and that you can be their one-stop shop and, you know, explain the benefits of that and, you know, how you're closer to their needs and that you know their, their you know, what they need for licensing. Um, you will need to get their contract number and you will need to contact FileMaker. And it's a good idea to, to copy the customer when you contact FileMaker so that we know that, um, that the customer is also in line with the idea. And then we will send you information. We can send you a quote f to you directly with, with FBA pricing and you can start taking over that contract. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Um, I will say, I want to say one other thing about that. I mean, that it is more important for us that you, that new customers go in this route. Um, we are taking care of existing um, renewals. So um, we don't want you to spend a huge amount of time converting everyone over. But it, I mean, we do see the benefit. As I said, it's the one-stop shop is very important. But just also consider that that is an example of moving one money that we get from one place to another. So it's not a huge, we're not looking for you to make a huge emphasis of that. We do, with new customers that you, you bring into the fold of FileMaker, we do want you to do that. But you are are open, you can do that, and you're welcome to do that. It's clear uh, yeah. as mud, right? It's just that sometimes, um, I, I recently went into a company, and they had three different licenses, and really they're all the same, I mean, same type of license. They need to be uh, consolidated, mm -hmm. and um, I said, well, you know, how can I do that? And but so you're get their contract, it, send it um, in, copy the customer, and say this customer wants to go through me directly. Here's their contract number. Can you um, just make it clear that you are an FBA when you send the information to FileMaker, um, and they and that you want the quote to be sent only to you? Okay. Um, the, the other question was um, for anonymous users, um, and the the restriction for FileMaker Pro only. On, Anonymous users cannot use FileMaker Pro Advanced. They can only use Go and WebDirect. Oh, okay. So it's Go or Red, Web, WebDirect, not Go or uh, WebDirect. Okay. We don't want to give out FileMaker Pro Advanced because it's an offline version and it's virtually giving away product for free if uh, we do uh, that, if okay. you guys do that. I thought it was, uh, the differentiation was between Pro and Pro Advanced. Okay, thank you. No Pro left. No Pro, there's no Pro anymore. I think you, answered my uh, third question on, okay. on the first. Thank you. Thank you. So I just want to make sure I was clear on the licensing with um, 
for the data API. So I saw on, on your example you had like the say 10 users and you had two additional. Those 10 users get their own allotment for the data API, correct? And those two additional are where you're going over your limit and for a discounted price it looked like you could get just access to just more data API usage? Um, so with every user, with every <coughs> concurrency, and with every seat. So mm -hmm. you get user licensing or you're getting concurrency licensing or you're getting seats when you're mm -hmm. talking about site licensing. Um, for every one, like if it's a five right. user, you're gonna get- um, Two times 12. Two to five times, to, like five users times two gigabytes mm -hmm. times 12 months right. is the amount of data API that you have. Right. You can add additional data API by buying two data API, mm -hmm. which will give you two times Two right. times 12 right. to add to that. And it's one huge bucket Chunk, right. that is used over the year. Right. And so, but, but the, the point, the takeaway from that that I didn't know about was that you can buy just the data. You don't have to buy a whole new seat that you don't yes. really need for Famager. You can just like buy data just API. Just data API seats and that is a discounted. Uh, uh, it's cheaper than buying a user. Buying I don't, I don't really system. remember what the pricing is. Okay. But. Awesome. Thanks. Thanks. Hi. Quick question. Um, I represent a volunteer organization, so we are the face of anonymous <laughs> users. Um, but we do need some FileMaker Pro Advanced, even though they're volunteers as well. So mm. rather than go into it now, what's the best way to write the subject line so you and I can have this conversation. <laughs> no, I will not, I honestly will not throw it away. That was a joke. I know, but. Okay, I, I mean, will even read prose. It just right. takes me a lot longer. Um, so do you want me to just say, I, I mean, we are a, um, we are a nonprofit. And you're selling, you're, you have volunteers. Who, yeah. No, yeah. We okay. can have a conversation. Yeah, because I think it's gonna be phone. a combination of concurrent and um, users. It's just I want to make sure we get the right number of users. That's okay. where I'm more um, concerned that we get the correct number and attaching it to a name. So, um, yeah, I, you'll be getting an email from okay. me. So, with that. Excellent. Thank you. Okay. Next. Um, so, when you were talking about the concurrency, you mentioned that obviously they can't use Pro Advanced, um, but they can use WebDirect and Go. What about the data API? Does that just, is concurrency just a part of it, a user that then gets times by two and 12? Yeah, it's yeah. Um, number of concurrent seats times two times 12. Okay, so anonymous users can still use data API. That's, that's still Yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. Yes. Hi there. Um, Hello. Thank you very much for a very lucid description of how all this works. Because I, I have been to a few of these. Uh, and this has made it very clear. But there's one little bit that I'm a bit confused about. Uh, Do you want to get a little bit closer sorry, to Sorry, yes. Yeah, I don't like blasting everyone. Um, I have a customer who's been a FileMaker customer for 20 years. And when he upgraded to 17, he ended up with two licenses, one for nine users and one for 25 concurrent users. You talk about consolidation, but I don't understand when it happens. Okay, well, first of all, you need to decide whether what he has right now makes sense and should go forward that way. As I said, if, if because we've added the entire platform to the user licenses, um, he may not need, depending on what he's using, those con that 25 concurrencies, he may not need that anymore. Because maybe he only bought that for WebDirect and Yes, um, and but, but I'm go. sort of saying whose responsibility is it to sort out the consolidation? Um, ours and yours together. Right. Okay. As a, as a partnership? Yeah. We will help you. We want to help you. Yes. Does that answer it? So I've got to, it's really mine to say to you, I don't think he needs all these and, we, and talk to him and decide what he needs. Absolutely. And then come back. Because yes. it, it sounded, it has sounded in the past as if it was going to be somehow automatic. I mean, you were going to make a best guess at what they wanted. Um, no, we will keep it separate until you tell us to either consolidate or don't renew. A lot of, we believe that a lot of, um, Ooh, two minutes. Um, a lot of um, 
contracts will go away. For instance, if they bought a single server, and if they bought another single server, and if they bought another single server, because three servers are included now, they probably will not be, re there will be a lot of contracts that will not renew. Yeah. Um, so if you feel like as you understand it well enough to suggest, but we're there to help you if you have any questions. Okay, that's great, thank you. Okay. Is the data API usage tracked at the server level, or is it somehow centrally tracked based on the contract number across all the servers that might be used for that contract? I'm gonna have Ronnie stand up and talk about the data API tracking by server level or not. By contract, okay. And what, um, Ronnie, isn't it that we actually, when they reach 80% of their data API, an email will go to them? How do they know, how does FileMaker know their email? Because, okay, so through the contract. Okay, so it's by contract. Okay, and the admin console on each server would show the total that's been used across all the servers? Not right now, okay. And what if a server is behind a firewall and doesn't allow outgoing access? Does it still get tracked? Will the server still work? It that was a yes. Okay. I'm supposed to reiterate. Okay, thank you. Thank you, thanks Ronnie. Good thing he's here. Um, I have, I think, one minute left, so I will take your question, and if there's any burning last question, that's it. Okay, uh, I apologize in advance for the stupidity of this question. I know nothing about licensing. Thank you very much for this session. It was extremely helpful. Wow, um, thank you. Uh, but uh, if, if a customer has uh, user licensing and they need concurrency for that web portal example that you were talking about, um, if they did want to add some concurrent users so that some people could access that, do they effectively lose two of their server installs from the user licensing? Is that what I understood? They don't lose it. So they would buy a, so let's say they had a five user user mm -hmm. license and then you're saying they want to add concurrency because maybe they want to have some anonymous you know, users, anonymous the users access. Yeah. They would buy a separate contract which would be a, a minimum five five concurrency, mm -hmm. um, they don't lose those servers, the three that came here, but we, we require you, if, if you're gonna be using them together, you need to use the concurrency server. You, don't, you could be using these, you own these three servers, mm -hmm. but if you're, if you're going to be accessing the same information, uh, these users should be connecting to the concurrency server, that one concurrency server. Okay, so you still... And again, will not be taking up a concurrent connection. Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay. Real quick. <laughs> this is the last one. Oh, no, this is a, now I'm scared. No, 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 it's, it's real quick. He's getting clapped the, at for this. <laughs> the sales assist tool only allows you to put either uh, user license or concurrent. They don't allow you to put both in the same order. Is this by design or are we thinking about changing it? Um, I never thought about that. I know it would be a separate contract. Um, so it's something I can think about. If, right if now, you're gonna keep it separate, that's fine. I just, you know, I just was looking at it the other day and it's, it's either one or the other. So. Okay. Would you like it to be, have both on there? It would simplify things. Yeah, all right, I'll, I'll take that back. Okay. Thank you. Okay, everybody, you are free to leave. I really appreciate your being here. And uh, have a great rest of the day and learn a lot.